Two sixty six. Well, good evening. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church tonight. Let's all get a songbook, stand and turn to page two sixty six. Page two sixty six. Especially, let's remember those in our families that uh, are not saved, that God will deal with their hearts. And uh, then let's remember our missionaries and uh, pray for our school, all of our staff and their families and our students, their families also tonight. And uh, then let's start praying for our revival meeting coming up just a few weeks away, uh, starting on April the 17th uh, with Brother Scott Matthews and his family that will be here with us. And so let's uh, start praying much for the meeting and uh, just pray for one another tonight. Amen. And uh, let's remember the Kern family, uh, Dennis Kern. He passed away last night unexpectedly. And uh, so let's remember the family there. That God will give them comfort and grace. And I know uh, also uh, Chloe um, Rochester, uh, she started chemo. So let's remember her, remember her family and all the needs there. Amen. Any other requests tonight uh, before we pray?
look I thought it looked like it was gonna be. Yeah, when I saw it I'm like Yeah. That's the way they can take care of that without any major problems. Remember Sharon Dickerson in prayer. Amen. Remember these tonight. that family in prayer sad situation God will give them grace and comfort 31 years old is awful young leave this world amen so pray for her family that God will give them grace any others tonight these requests tonight all right any others just before we pray this evening let's all gather around the altar and pray and and uh, just uh, I'm glad that the choir sings a song God still answers prayer I'm glad he does and we never need to quit praying amen just keep on praying and uh, just keep trusting the Lord truly he is the one that is able amen so let's pray for one another. Pray for all of our homes here at Victory. That God would bless and meet every need. A lot of times we don't know what some of our families are going through, what they're having to deal with. So we certainly want to want to pray for them tonight. Amen. All right. Let's all pray together. Our Heavenly Father tonight, Lord, again, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house. We thank you, Lord, for the good day you've given us. Lord, thank you for the good week thus far. Thank you for every blessing, Lord, that has come in our lives. Lord, we know that every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down uh, from above. And we thank you for everything, Lord, you've done in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that we can gather here tonight. Lord, we can share our burdens and share our needs and the needs and of other folks, Lord, in our church and other families. God, you've heard all of these requests that have been made known tonight. Lord, we bring all of these before you, asking God that you'd work a miracle in many of these requests. Father, we do pray for Brother Mike. God, that you'd touch him. God, strengthen him and help him. Father, I pray that, Lord, he'll soon be able, God, to move about and be able to do, Lord, things that he wants to do. And I pray that you'd bless him. God, meet every need. Bless his family. God, just touch them. Help them, Father. We pray, Lord, tonight for little Chloe Rochester, Father. God, that you'd touch her, and God, help her, I pray, and she, uh, Lord, began those treatments. God, please, God, me, meet that need there, Lord, bless her uh, parents, bless her grandparents, all of her family. God, give them help, Lord, give them grace, and give them strength, my Father, in these days. Father, we pray for the Curran family tonight, that God, you would uh, give comfort to them and help them, Lord, we pray for the Grissom family, Lord, that you'd help them comfort their hearts. God, we know that you're able, we believe you, God, to uh, meet those needs tonight. Lord, most of all, we pray for those in our families that are lost. God, we want to see our families saved. And Lord, when we get to heaven, Lord, we certainly want all our families to be there. And I pray that you'll deal with their heart, God, minister in their lives. And Lord, that they'll see their need before it's eternally too late. Help us, dear God, to live our lives that they might see Christ in us and Oh, God, that we could be that which we need to be, Lord. Uh, God, to bring glory to your name. Oh, Father, tonight we pray for our missionaries. Thanking you, Lord, for their willingness to go. And, God, for your uh, supplying every need in their lives. And I pray, God, that you'd bless them and keep them safe, especially, uh, Lord, those in far lands. God, bless them and help them and their families. Father, we thank you for our school. Lord, I pray you'll bless it. And, God, keep your hand on it. Bless our staff and their families. 
Oh, God, meet every need in their lives. We pray for our students, God, and their families tonight, Lord, that you'd help them, especially, Father, those that are not saved. I pray, Lord, the word of God will reach the hearts of these young people. Oh, God, that as they give their heart to Christ, Lord, that it will reach their parents, Father. Father, tonight we just thank you, God, for being so good to us. We ask you, Lord, to bless our young people as they meet this evening. Oh, God, touch every heart and every life. God, again, all these requests. I pray for Brother Snookum tonight. God, that you'd touch him and help him, I pray. And Lord, for spring, Father, that you'd touch her. Oh, God, as you're talking about more surgery, I know, God, you're able. And Lord, to do all things, I pray, Father, that you'd touch her. Pray for my wife tonight, Lord. Thank you that she's feeling some better. And I pray, God, that you'll continue to touch her and help her, Father. God, just meet every need again, Father, in all these requests, all the needs among our every home here at Victory. We thank you for our church, our church family. Thank you for your goodness, Lord, to us, your grace and mercy. God, may you meet with us now tonight. May the word of God encourage us and God strengthen us, Lord, for the days ahead. And God, everything that's done, Lord, we pray for revival coming up just yes. a few weeks. Oh, God, meet with us, I pray, and send revival. Stir our hearts and stir our county, Lord. Please, my Father, bless all the men of God as they stand and preach tonight. Use them, Lord, I pray. And all that you do, God, we'll give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get a songbook stand and turn to page 135. 135.
I may mention a couple of things. Uh, of course, uh, March is uh, Pastor's Wife Appreciation Month, and so this coming Sunday uh, we'll be honoring our Pastor's Wife. Amen. Uh, on Pastor's Appreci Wife Appreciation Day uh, this coming Sunday, and uh, so if you can uh, make plans to be here as we celebrate our Pastor's Wife and. I certainly appreciate her and her dedication to the Lord and also to the church and her family, her husband, amen, amen. And I just appreciate her so, so much and, and I appreciate all that she does, amen. And then, of course, we have the revival flyers out in the vestibule. Be sure to pick up a couple of them, get the word out about our meeting coming up starting April the 17th. And uh, through uh, the 19th with uh, Brother Scott Matthews and the Matthews family. And then, of course, three weeks from Sunday is Easter Sunday. And uh, so things are moving right along. Amen. It's hard to believe we're already halfway through March. And uh, before you know it, it'll be summertime. Amen. But uh, uh, do pray much for the services that are coming up Easter Sunday. Try to get your family to come with you, friends to come with you. And then, of course, the meeting will go a week after Easter. It'll start that uh, a week from Easter Monday. Amen. Psalm 23 this evening. I'm sure every one of us in this building tonight have read this psalm. Most probably all of you could quote it or quote part of it uh, because it's probably the most popular psalm of all the psalms. And uh, I believe there's good reason for it being that. And uh, as we look at Psalm 23, verse number 1, the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our Father tonight, thank you again for the privilege to be here in your house. Thank you, Lord, for everyone here in the building tonight. Thank you, Lord, for all of our young people that are with us also this evening. I pray, Father, that you'd meet with us, help us this uh, evening, Lord, as we look to thy word. God, may our hearts be open, receptive, and uh, Lord, to the word of God. Thank you for this great psalm, Lord, that we have read tonight. Lord, that is so full of uh, good things for the child of God. And Lord, I just want to say thank you, God, for being so loving and kind, Lord, to us. And I pray you'd help us, Father, to love you and to serve you and to honor you with our lives, God, in everything that we say and, Lord, everything that we do, God, all of our actions. God, please help me tonight, Lord, to preach, and we'll thank you, God, for all that's done, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach tonight, of course, from this psalm on this thought, Our Great Shepherd. Now, of course, Psalm, at the end of this Psalm, he said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, we can see that it's a picture of the end of the age when our Lord will reign in perfect righteousness. Amen. And on that day, those who have been washed in the, his blood, saved by his grace, will reign with him. Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 4 says, And I saw thrones. And they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But between the time that you and I have gotten saved and the day that we go home to heaven... Uh, and live with there forever, there is a life that must be lived right now. Amen. 
We've got to live now. I'm looking forward to heaven and all that it's going to be. But right now, we've got to live. Until that day that we leave here, we've got a life that we must live. And that's where we can look at Psalm 23. In these verses, we are allowed to listen as one of God's servants lifts his heart in song and ought to honor of the Lord that he loves. Amen. And so in these verses, David tells us that there is plenty to get excited about when it comes to the Lord and his goodness in our lives. I'm glad that living for God is not all gloom and doom. To hear some people talk, uh, being saved is the worst thing ever happened to them. It's all bad. It's all downhill. But that's not true. Amen. For us who are saved and serving God, there, it's not all gloom and doom. I'm glad there's victories. I'm glad there's joy. That's unspeakable and full of glory. And if you know this great shepherd, praise God, you have plenty to be excited about. Amen. And so I want us to look at a few things tonight. First of all, I want you to notice who we exalt. Who we exalt. In verse number one, he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So notice who David is exalting. David is, uh, as, uh, identifies the object of his love as the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. This is the great I am. This is Jehovah. This is the God of creation, the God of salvation, the God of eternity. He is the one and only true and living God. Amen. And so we notice who we exalt. That's who David was exalting, is exalting the Lord. Notice his name. David calls him the Lord. Amen. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Some call him God. Some call him friend. Some call him father. Some call him Jesus. And, and that's who, they, who David's talking about, all of those. Amen. And, and there are so many names and titles that are given unto the Lord to help us to understand more about his character and the characteristics that uh, he has that he is beneficial to the people of God. I'm glad in verse 1 he's described as the Lord, our shepherd, or Jehovah Roy. In verse 1 he's also described as the God that will provide as Jehovah Jireh. He said, I shall not want. In verse number two, he's described as the God of peace, Jehovah Salom. In verse number three, he's described as the God that heals and of righteousness, Jehovah Rapha. In verse number four, he's described as the God that's there or Jehovah Shammah. He is, verse five, described as our God, our banner, and our sanctifier, Jehovah Nisi. And in verse number 6, he's described as the Lord Most High or Jehovah el Ion. I'm glad David uses many names for God in this psalm. And I'm glad we can see in his name all different aspects and all the benefits that it is to you and I who are his people. Amen. So we not only see his name, but then we see his nature. Of all the names that God has, David uh, could have magnified many of them. But he sings about Jehovah Roha. The Lord is my shepherd. Wonder why David began to think about that. Because it's seemingly the image of a shepherd is the one who tenderly leads, the one who feeds and cares for his sheep. David knew a lot about what a shepherd was because he had been a shepherd, amen. I believe David was a great shepherd to his sheep. And when he begins to think about God and see all that God is, he saw him as the great shepherd of his people, amen. And this is a perfect picture of our Savior's relationship to his people. In fact, John chapter 10 gives much thought about the Lord being our shepherd, amen. I'm glad that he is our great shepherd. I'm glad he does care 
for his sheep. Amen. I'm glad that when I got saved, I got more than a savior. I got a shepherd, amen, for my life. I'm glad he's my savior. I'm glad he's my shepherd tonight, amen, because that means something else. I got someone who loves me, someone who tends to me, someone who cares about me, someone who leads me, someone who feeds me, somebody that protects me, somebody that guides me. I mean, we've got so much in him tonight, amen. No wonder David just cried out, the Lord is my shepherd, amen. And therefore, tonight we can rejoice in knowing this shepherd, and if you know him like David did, then you know that he is worthy of our exhortation and exaltation. Amen. Therefore, the Lord's sheep, we should never be ashamed to exalt him, to praise him, to worship him. Thank God who sought us, who bought us, and brought us unto himself. Amen. He's the one that left the 99 and came after that lost sheep that was alone and in need of saving. I'm glad, praise God, he's our shepherd tonight. If you're saved, he's your shepherd. Amen. David made it personal there. Not only who we exalt, he said the Lord is my shepherd. But notice David talks about what we experience in verses 1 through 3. Now, in verse number 1, we can see what we experience is personal. I'm glad it's not something that we just have to hear about and never understand or, or experience it for ourselves, but this is something personal. This is something I have experienced in my own life. Amen. And it's personal. When David begins the psalm, he is writing in the first person. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I like that word, that little, uh, what do you call it, a verb, is? That means right now, he is my shepherd. When David wrote that, the Lord was his shepherd. Tonight when I say the Lord is, my, he is right now. Tomorrow it will still say the same thing. He's going to be my shepherd. He's right now my shepherd. And in the morning, if the Lord lets me live, he'll still be my shepherd while I'm here in this world. Amen. And so David is showing how personal it is. It seems as though he is talking to us about the shepherd. And in doing so, he uses those uh, personal pronouns and the pronoun my to talk about his relationship. He doesn't say the Lord is a shepherd. He doesn't say the Lord is our shepherd. He doesn't say the Lord is your shepherd, but he says the Lord is my shepherd. Hey, I'm glad he's my shepherd. I don't know if he's yours or not, but I do know he's my shepherd. Amen. And it, it's personal. The night I got saved, he became my shepherd. Not only was he my savior, but he's my shepherd tonight. Amen. Amen. And so David tells us that he has a personal relationship by saying that he's my shepherd. Amen. If you can say that, praise God, you've got something to rejoice tonight about. Uh, above everything that you're saved, you're, you're on your way to heaven. You've got a, a, a God in heaven that loves you. You've got a great shepherd that cares about your every move. Not only is it personal, but notice it's precious. Amen. Look at verse number two. He says in verse number two, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And in verse number two, we see two things that makes this relationship with our shepherd precious. Number one is our placement. The Bible said here, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And it shows us the tenderness of the shepherd. David tells us that his shepherd makes him to lie down in green pastures. The shepherd knows that unlike goats, which will eat almost anything, the sheep are not like that. They prefer the tender green grass. Therefore, the shepherd leads them to the places where he knows that they will be fed. He makes them to lie down in those green uh, pastures 
uh, because he knows that they cannot properly digest their food unless they lie down. He also knows that sheep will not lie down unless they feel perfectly safe from enemy attack. He knows they need to lie down because their wool grows in thick and in direct proportion to the time they spend resting and ruminating on the green grasses that they have ingested. And so with all of this in mind, David knew all about this because he attended to the sheep for years. And with all of this in mind, the shepherd tenderly leads his sheep to places of great safety and nutrition. What a picture of our Lord Jesus, amen, that he does for you and I. He knows that we must feed. He provides the best food for us. He knows we must rest, and he allows what we have ingested to digest properly. And if we are to produce the maximum fruit for his glory, he leads us to those green pastures of his word and allows us to graze on the riches that are contained in the word of God and shelters us while we rest in the riches of his grace. I'm telling you, what a shepherd tonight that we have in Jesus. I'm glad he fights off the enemy. He fights off the world so that we will have time to rest in him. He tenderly meets our every need. Amen. Oh, listen, thank God that he cares for us. Amen. Oh, what an advantage we have of privilege and provision from our shepherd. Not only the place he makes me to lie down in green pastures, but notice the placid time. He leads me beside the still waters. This is the thoughtfulness of the shepherd. The shepherd leads his sheep beside the still waters because he knows that the sheep will not drink from a running stream. You see, sheep are afraid of running water. And the reason being, they're not designed as swimmers. Amen. They grow wool. Wool doesn't do good when it gets wet. Amen. And so they are extremely frightened of running water. And they are extremely top heavy. And if they get wet, they're going to fall. And if they get caught in the water, they're going to drown. Amen. And so the sheep, they know this and shy away from running water. Therefore, the shepherd knows. And he searches a place where there is still waters for them to be able to drink from. If necessary, a shepherd would go to the stream, a downstream, and he would dam up a place in the stream to stop the waters long enough for his sheep to be able to get the sustenance they need from the water. Oh, listen, aren't you glad our shepherd knows exactly what we need, when we need it, and how we need it? Thank God he takes care of us, amen? And the great shepherd also knows that his sheep need the cool waters of his grace to make it through. He knows that they need places of stillness where they can rest and reflect upon him and the blessings that he gives in our lives. Hey, he cares about what you are facing. Amen. He knows what you're facing and he cares about what you're facing because he understands. He feels what you feel. He's been there. He knows. He understands. And I'm glad you can cast all of your care upon him because he cares about you. Amen. He provides a place of rest, a place of peace, and a place of safety. You see the phrase, he restoreth my soul, literally means to bring back. Hey, the, the great shepherd brings back the wayward soul from death into life. Amen. John 5, 24, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. Jesus said in Luke chapter 15, verses 4, verse 7, he said, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine just persons 
which need no repentance. Amen. I'm glad tonight, thank God, if he's your shepherd, you've got eternal life. You don't have to worry about, amen, dying and going to hell. If Jesus is your Savior, he gives you eternal life, amen. And he's our great shepherd. He's our Savior. He's our everything. He's going to take care of us. He's going to make sure that we have what we need. And thank God we can just rest in the shepherd tonight, amen. Rest in him. If you know him, praise God. Hallelujah, you've got a lot to rejoice about, amen. But if you don't know him, you're dead where you sit. Because if you don't know him, you've never been saved. And 1 John 5, 12 says, He that hath the Son hath life. He's your Savior, you have life. But he that hath not the Son of God hath not life, amen. So I'm glad that the great shepherd tonight, thank God for all that he does in the sheep's life. I'm glad for all that he's done in my life. Amen. But not only that, but then uh, the great shepherd provides leadership. Now, I have heard and understand that sheep do not have the best sense of direction. Matter of fact, I've always heard that sheep were the dumbest of the animals. You ever went to the circus and saw trained sheep? I ain't never either. And I know if I've had some goats in my life, and if sheep are any dumber than them goats I had, they're in bad shape. They need help. Amen. And uh, so I'm glad we've got a great shepherd that understands we can't make it on our own. Amen. And he provides leadership for us. The shepherd always leads the sheep. I remember reading several years ago that uh, there was a tour group that went to Israel. And while they're in, on this group, their uh, guy that was telling them all, their guide was telling them everything about sheep and the shepherd and all these things. And, and he told them, he said, the, the shepherd always leads the sheep, always. The shepherd always goes before his sheep. He leads them. And so he said they pulled into town on the bus and as they were getting off the bus, they saw a herd of sheep uh, coming down the street. And, and the guy was in the back driving the, the, the sheep. And uh, the people started looking and wondering. And they saw the sheep going before him. And this guy driving them and pushing them forward. And, and they got to one. They said, hey, I thought you told us that the, the, the shepherd always leads the sheep. He said, that's exactly right. He said, well, why is this guy not leading the sheep? He said, he's not the shepherd. He's taking them to the butcher. Amen. So I'm glad our shepherd is always ahead, making sure our way is safe. Hey, the only one that's in the back driving you is the devil. Amen. But oh, I'm glad the shepherd provides leadership. He leads uh, the sheep. Amen. Notice what he says. Uh, there in verse number, uh, he leadeth me in verse number two. He leadeth me beside the sheep. He leadeth me. He doesn't drive me. He doesn't push me. He leads me. Amen. He provides leadership. Now, I'm, I will agree that many times probably sheep do not uh, like the places that they are led into. But yet the shepherd knows what's best. You and I tonight, we don't always like the places and the path that we are walking. We don't always like where life is leading us. But yet if we're following the shepherd, he knows what's best for us. Amen. And if he's leading us, he's going to make sure the way is safe for us to come through. Amen. Amen. They can always be assured that he will always lead them in the right path. The Lord will never lead you down the wrong road. I've heard many people over the years say, well, I felt like the Lord wanted me to do that, and what they were doing was wrong according to the word of God. God will never tell you to do anything contrary to the word, amen. If you're doing anything contrary to the word, God ain't leading you to do it. Well, the Lord wanted me to hold my ties for a few months. Now, that ain't the Lord giving you that. 
Well, the Lord wanted me to just take a break from church. No, no. That's not the Lord leading you. Amen. <laughs> you got to think about what the Word says. The Word says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. And so that's certainly, if God was leading you to stay away from church, that would be contrary to the Word. Amen. And so the Lord leads his people, and he always leads in the right path. Psalms 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. And so we see who we exalt is the Lord. We see what we experience in these verses. But then verses 4 through 6, we see how we express it. The first three verses, David has talked about the shepherd. Now, beginning with verse number four, David begins to talk to the shepherd. And when he considers what he has done and who he is and who he is talking to, David cannot refrain but to praise him. Amen. You ever just sit around and think about how good God's been to you? My soul. God's been better to me than I ever deserved. God gave me a good wife. I mean, he gave me, a, he gave me the best. You other guys may feel that way, but I'm sorry. I got the best. God gave me three beautiful daughters, and I love them dearly. I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for my son-in-laws. I hope they're not listening. My son-in-laws, I love them. I, I mean, I love them regardless, Amen. And you say, why do you love them? Well, they're the father of my grandchildren. So that's why I love them. Amen. And uh, then my grandchildren. Man, I love him. I love him. I've got a bunch of girls, a couple of boys. I mean, just God blessed me with girls. I mean, if me and Deb had had one more child and it had been a girl, we'd have started a girl's home. Amen. We almost had a girl's home anyway when our girls were coming up because they all, a bunch of them stayed at the house all the time. I was telling somebody the other night, I said, every time I'd go home, here, there was always somebody at our house. And they would stay. They wouldn't just come to just spend the night. They stayed for days. I'm like, dear Lord. I'm like, does your parents know where you are? And I, I'm thankful that my wife loved them and and my girls, I'd much rather had them at my house because I know what they were doing most of the time, or Debbie did anyway. I was gone working, hunting, doing all the stuff, you know, man does, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, but I just think about the goodness of the Lord. How good God is. I'm sure that David got to think of, well, the Lord's my shepherd. God's redeemed me. God has saved my life. God has taken care of me. He's leading me in the right ways. He's doing all these things for me. And I mean, David began to rejoice in all that he has in this great shepherd. We can see David, his praise for God's power. Look at verse number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David began to think about the omnipotence of God, how powerful our God is. God's omnipotence brings peace. David said, I will fear no evil. Amen. I mean, listen, when you when you got God on your side, why be afraid? Amen. I don't ever really remember being too afraid when I was always with my daddy when I was growing up. Because I always figured my daddy could whoop anybody. No matter what happened. Amen. And I remember... When we were, I was probably 12, I guess maybe 11, 12 years old, and uh, me and my daddy and uh, my first cousin and his daddy, my uncle, we went fishing. And uh, while we were fishing, a storm came up. Man, I mean a storm. A storm on the water is bad anyway. I mean it stormed and daddy put, us, put that boat as fast as it'd go and we headed found an old barn, got in that old barn and rode out the storm while the boat tied it up. After the storm was over, we went back to get in the boat and the back end of the boat was full of water. Now this has been longer than I want to tell you. 
And uh, I didn't even know what a bilge pump was back in them days. But anyhow, the boat was full of water all the back end of it. And I'm thinking, wow. And so we all got in the boat, and Daddy cranked the motor, and we got out in the uh, water. And uh, he told my uncle, he said, now I'm going to get going down the river, uh, down the, the lake. And he said, as I'm going down the lake, I want you to reach back there and pull the plug. My cousin lost his mind. He started screaming, but I didn't. It didn't bother me because I knew my daddy knew what he was doing. And so I just stood there and watched him. And I knew what my, my daddy knew. I knew my daddy was pretty smart. And so, and my uncle, he was pretty heavy then, and, and the water was heavy, and so the boat was setting it up like that. I mean, the thing went, I mean, just barely moving. And that thing, the front end of it was up like that. And my uncle got in the back. My cousin, he's freaking out. I'm standing there watching everything going on. My daddy's driving the boat. And he reached down and pulled that plug. Next thing you know, that water started going out. That boat started planing off. And when all the water was gone, he put the plug back in it. And we headed on down the lake. Hey, but it didn't bother me because I knew my daddy was in control. I knew he had probably done that before. Didn't scare me. Freaked my little cousin out. Hey, that's the difference in knowing the shepherd. Sometimes things almost freak us out, but we've got to remember, hey, the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. He's taking care of us. He knows the way we're taking. Thank God if he pulls the plug. He knows it's just getting the water out. Amen. And I thank God his power. It brings peace. Amen. There are things that happen in our lives that are frightening that sometimes it bothers us and it tears us up. But, oh, we've just got to remember the Lord is the one in control. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And thank God God's, God's omnipotence brings peace in the time of fear. I'm glad there's peace in his presence. And he says, that, for thou art with me. Amen. I mean, he was with us. The presence of the great shepherd with his sheep. Thank God, from this idea, we can see his leadership. And even in the darkest of times, in verse number four, oh, listen, I'm glad that he is always with us. Amen. Even when it don't feel like he's with us, he's still with us. Amen. I'm glad this is a truth that we can depend on and we can rejoice in because he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Hallelujah. His omnipotence brings peace. His omnipotence and his peace, there is, there is a power and there's peace in that. His omnipotence brings protection. He said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David talks about the implements of the shepherd. The protection that the shepherd gives with the rod and the staff. Amen. Each served its own purpose. And the sheep know the purpose of the rod and staff. And because of that, it brings comfort to the sheep. You and I tonight, I'm glad we can enjoy the peace and we can enjoy knowing that God is protecting his people, amen? He protects us from our enemies and thank God sometimes he even protects us from our own self, amen? I'm glad that God is all powerful and David is praising God for his power. But then David talks about and he praises God for his provisions. Look at verse number five. He said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Amen. God provides rest. He said, you're going to prepare a table in the presence of mine enemies. The Lord spreads a table for his children. Thank God, no matter where they are, even in the presence of their enemies. God provides remedies. He said, thou anointest my head with oil. Oh, thank God for the oil. And the oil is, it speaks of the Holy Spirit that God gives to his people. Amen. I'm glad that God anoints his people and gives them healing in their lives. And then God provides rejoicing. David said, my cup runneth over. Your 
cup ever get run over? Amen. David tells that the Lord has blessed his life abundantly to where it's more than he can handle at times. His cup is past full. It's running over. Amen. I read where in those days that when a guest was sitting with the host, the host would often get up and refill the cup as they're fellowshipping. And if the host came and filled the cup half full, it was the host's way of saying, the evening is over. It's time for you to go home. You ever had people like that? I mean, one night we had some folks in our house been years ago, and I thought we were finally going to have to say, come on, honey, let's go to bed so these people can go home. Amen. But the host is saying with a half cup, it's almost over. You need to start getting ready to go home. Amen. So if you go to somebody's house and you say, can I have a little more? And they give you a little. Yeah. It's... I'm just kidding. But in those days, that's what it meant. And it was say, they're the host way saying, it's time to close this up and time for you to go home. And uh, however, if the host came by and filled your cup full, he was saying, I'm enjoying our fellowship. Hope you'll stay a little longer. And so when the Lord filled David's cup and caused it to overflow, it was a sign that God was blessing David and David was enjoying the blessings of God. Amen? I mean, it was not just full. It was running over. Amen? Overflowing. Thank God I'm glad that our cup runs over with the goodness of the Lord, amen, and the blessings of God. I'm thankful tonight he gives blessings to his people. We praise him for his power. We praise him for his provisions. And then David talks about his praise for God's promises. Look at verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A couple of things that I've done. First of all, in this verse, we can see help for today. As I said at the beginning of the message, we think about heaven, praise God, we're going to heaven, we rejoice about it, we think about it, we read about it, we sing about it, and, and, and we meditate on it, how wonderful heaven's going to be. But we're living right now. And I'm glad between here and home, there's help for right now. Amen. God said there's goodness and mercy will be the constant companions on the way home. And there are the components of grace, and they remind us that as we travel, we will always be blessed with grace that will be sufficient for the need. Amen. Paul was assured that, that God's grace would be sufficient. And I'm glad that God's grace is sufficient for you and I. Amen? Then we, we need to know this, that there is nothing that we can face uh, greater in life that will be greater than the grace of God. We may look at it and think, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but the grace of God is sufficient to see you through. Amen? Job said this, Job 23, 10, he said, but he knoweth the way that I take. That's, that's, that's the key to living right now. He knows the way that I take. And Job said, when he hath tried me, he knew it was the Lord, I shall come forth as gold. Amen. I'm glad that God will give us assurance and he will give us help. He will give us grace for Today, but I'm glad, thank God, there's help for tomorrow too. David says, when it all comes down to the end, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know about y'all, but I'm kind of excited about that place. That place called heaven. Jesus said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again. And receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. I'm thankful 
for the place called heaven. Revelation 21, 4, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. When we get there, all those things will not be there. Here there is death. Here there is sorrow. Here there is crying. Here there is pain. But when we get there, all of that's over. Amen. Thank God for the great shepherd. Our great shepherd. Tonight, can you say the Lord is my shepherd? If you can, you just keep reminding yourself of that every day. You're not in this thing alone. You're not walking this thing alone. You're, you've got a great shepherd that's going to watch over and take care and lead you and guide you. All you need to do is follow and be obedient to him. Amen. And as we follow him, as we're obedient to him, he will take care of all our provision. He will take care of every need. Oh, there may be times of hurt. That's when he's going to anoint you with oil. He's going to take care of that. He's going to give you grace. He's going to help you in every situation. Because he's the great shepherd of the sheep. Father, I thank you tonight for the word of God. Lord, what an encouragement. Lord, this psalm is to our hearts. Lord, this psalm has been used many, many times when people are going through deep and dark shadows in their lives and sorrows and hurts. Oh, I'm glad we have a great shepherd that loves and cares for us, his sheep. I'm glad, Lord, that we that are saved, we are the sheep of his pasture. And I'm thankful, Father, for the provision that we have in him. God, may you bless your people. May uh, the word of God encourage us to know that our shepherd will never lead us in the wrong path, but always in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God, have your will, have your way in our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. While we stand, our heads are bowed tonight. The great shepherd, do you know the great shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. I know he's a shepherd. I know he's a lot of people's shepherd, but I'm glad he's my shepherd. And I just want you to be assured in your heart he's your shepherd. God, thank you again for everyone in the building. Thank you for those who have been watching. God, thank you for our young people. Lord, I pray you'll bless them, use them. Thank you for our youth leaders. Thank you, God, for their love for these young people. I pray, oh God, that you'll bless and touch all the sick among our church. God, raise them up, make them well. God, bless those that have discouraged. God, help those that have grown cold. Oh, God, send revival. Please have your way. Bless the remainder of the week, Lord. And God, everything that's done, we'll thank you. We'll praise you. I pray you'll bless the Lord's day coming. Lord, especially as we celebrate our pastor's wife appreciation day. God, thank you for her. Pray, Lord, that the church will just, God, all will just show their appreciation. God, for her love for you and for them. And Lord, for the work of God, we thank you. Bless and have your way now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Certainly appreciate you being here tonight. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Pray for one another. Be sure to pick up some of the revival flyers and get them out. And start praying much for the meeting.